Well, hello, everyone. This is Tex Ag's Rewind, presented by Yeti. I'm David Nuno with our friends from the fan show, Kelly Adams, Hunter Shirtliff, and, of course, Matt Browning. Gentlemen, uh, good show today. We had, like, a list. We got a little bit of, uh, you know, defensive talk. What was your favorite part of uh, the fan show portion of the show? Hunter being back. Yeah, he's, he's not it's pretty dang good, good, wasn't it? I like, he, he I like Hunter's his, new haircut. <laughs> didn't even wear his Tune visor or nothing. You're just in here just you didn't here just showing Hunter. up, man, yeah. So uh, a great part of the show was uh, Stephen McGee and Ryan Swope in here together. Always love talking to those guys. Yeah, those guys are great together. They are. They're, they're great. Uh, Aaron Torres joined us. We talked NBA draft. Not that we normally do it, but tonight's the draft. And San Antonio's got the number one pick. And mm-hmm. it's a big surprise. I don't know if anybody knows who they're going to take. I, uh, I don't pay attention anymore. Oh, that's right. You're not a I'm just can't, can't do it until Pop retires. Yep. Bill Bender of the Sporting News talked about the most hyped guys going into a draft. And these gentlemen, these knuckleheads, as I call them, the fan show. Check it out here on uh, Texags Rewind. If I mention the University of Texas. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know what, I'm, what kind of response <laughs> I'm going to get. Now we know Texas is back on the schedule of next year. Take it away. They just had to follow us here, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, they like breaking everything up, and they just they just had to have us. They did. Um, no, in all honesty, I, I am I'm excited for it. I know there's probably a lot of bitter Aggie fans that don't care to ever play them again or see them, but uh, just for the the history that's there and the, this great great state, it, it's you know. Well, we should be playing this game year in, year out, uh, just because it's fun. I mean, I've grown up in Austin. I've got, you know, cousins and friends mm-hmm. that have gone there and played there. And so we always t- get back and talk. I mean, we, we talk trash. We've been talking trash the last decade for, for nothing because it never gets solved and you never get to, you know, see any kind of results. It's all speculative. And you just hope that you see them in a bowl game, which would never happen. And finally, they followed us to the SEC, and, and it's going to happen. And so I think it's going to be great for our state, great for the players, great for high school football. And uh, there's just so much history there. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm excited for it. And, and kind of we, we can, you know, trash talking can, can be handled every year now. Well, let's picture this, right? A year from now, right? Do we all agree that if the expectation is 10 wins for this team, right, <laughs> what it should be every year, Let's say they are a very good team. I think Texas is going to have a good season. I do. Absolutely. They're, they're coming in the Big 12. In. They they're got talent, right? Yeah, they're so, prime. So yeah, next year's the timing is playoff, too. Yeah, I'm not real excited about the timing just because our program um, kind of coming off a couple r- rough years. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, and, and not to mention, which Texas has been down that road. They've, I mean, yeah. they've been, they've, they've really struggled the last decade, but they're, they're catching fire. I don't know a lot oh, yeah. of these names. Even Wemby, who everybody knows the name, nobody's really seen him play. They just see a YouTube highlight or a Twitter well, highlight. Well, and that's what cracks me up is, is you know, he's the most high since LeBron. I mean, I, I don't from, – from a perspective of what his career could be, okay, I get it. But stop with the most hype as in, like, the most excitement because I'm here to tell you, I mean, even two years ago – well, I guess it was four years ago now, Zion Williamson – His final college game, 20 million people watched. Like, so don't tell me that he's the most hyped. You know, Greg Oden was a guy that people were saying would have been the number one pick after his sophomore year of high school. I'll even take it a step further, and I know this is a little controversial now. He didn't even go number one overall. I think Lonzo Ball had more hype coming in than when Banyama. So, no, you know, and and David, it stinks because it's an unfortunate situation because, like I said, it just kind of shows the disconnect. What it really shows, David, is that the NBA has really devalued the role, what what college basketball is and the role that it plays from the perspective of, you know, not just a developmental arm for young basketball players, but also something that I've thought for years is I think they devalue the role that the NBA plays in marketing. You know, I just mentioned Zion Williamson. Of course he was hyped because he was on national TV every single night. Scoot Henderson, I'm sure, is a great prospect. Let's be honest, even, listen, I love basketball. If Scoot Henderson walked by me right now, I'm not totally positive that I would know who it was. So I just bring it up to say it's a new era, it's a new whatever. And, you know, I, I hate that this is where it's at. But, again, I think this is, again, a byproduct of what the NBA has decided to come, become what they've decided to be. But I think they're missing out on I, – I, I don't think they fundamentally get, like, hey, college basketball actually has a lot of value to us. That's something I've always thought the NFL – 
and football has done a good job of understanding. All right, so I'm not mad about A&M going to the Music City Bowl and your predictions. I'm not mad about it. I am hoping it's a much better season than that, and I can understand why some people think that's, you know, that's their ceiling. I can also understand why some people think they're going to win 10 games. Tell us how you landed on that for A&M. Oh, I, it, it's through the pecking order of the SEC. When you get through the teams that you're going to put in the New Year's Day six, and I, I'm guessing you're not surprised by our New Year's Day six picks. You know, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, uh, Tennessee's in the Citrus Bowl against Wisconsin, and then you go from there and in, into the second tier. But I, I heard you talking in the last segment, and it is a boomer bust season for Texas A&M. If there were a team that fit the profile of an out of nowhere playoff team and I out of I'm saying out of nowhere from the context of coming off a five and seven season and getting to the playoff based on the talent they have A&M would fit that profile maybe not like how TCU did last year because TCU had a first year coach who hadn't hadn't met his roster right they just had a charmed season in the big 12 whereas Texas A&M showed some signs late last season really loved the quarterback um and I think the Bobby Petrino hire is really what everybody's transfixed on when we're maybe looking past the fact that they've got a very talented roster coming back. Yeah, no doubt about that. I, I, to me, I can see a nine-win season. I can see a better than that. And I can still see the question marks that everybody has. Um, but in June, I'm choosing to be optimistic because I do wow. think they have the talent. And I do think Bobby Petrino is that missing ingredient. Now they just got to go do it. Yeah, one of the things I looked at with Connor Wigman, so – I like quarterbacks with five-star pedigree to begin with. And he had a strong, obviously had a strong finish to the year. Now, and I went on pro football focus. Pro football focus is a great tool for me to use. Uh, most initially underappreciated player that panned out in a big way. And the example I use is J.J. Watt. They booed him at the draft. Turned out to be the best player in franchise history. Who is somebody like, oh, man, we took this dude. And Wow. I'm glad we took this dude. I got this one for AM. All right. Anaya Smith. Oh, you just stole my thunder, oh. bro. Okay, okay. No, that's good. That's I'm good. I'm going to give you Anaya. I'll take Von Miller. No, 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 no. Miller's no. another one. Uh, can yeah. I take Anaya? Yes. Okay. You just, you just took both, technically. Well, you, you can oh, have You got a third one. there, Hunter? No, that's good, though. Anaya Smith. Anaya Smith committed in that class. That, mm -hmm. that And we were like, why is this guy committing? Who is he? None of us had ever heard of him. We had these big Everybody was all angry. The board. Why are we even bothering to recruit three-star players? We only had, two, like, two spots left. And we're, we've got two five-star, like, four five-stars still on the board. And we're like, we're going to take one of these two. And then Anaya Smith commits. And we're like, who is this guy? No one knows him. Why in the right. world are we taking The board's blew up, exploded. And this guy's been one of my one of my all-time favorite eggs. Absolutely. Love Anaya Smith. And I'm so glad he's here. And I'm so glad we were all stupid. Would you like <laughs> to take Von Miller? Yeah, or you could. I mean, you can throw A-Chain in there. Yeah. I mean, I know we had the hype machine upstairs here with Mr. Broninger. Behind he, loved, him. he did love but, H. But that was a guy that, you know, his quarterback was getting all the pub. Uh, he's a three star coming out and, and panned out well. And Vaughn Miller, if I remember right, was not the most highly recruited guy at DeSoto at that time. Yeah, it was Cyrus Gray, mm -hmm. who turned out very well also, but he didn't turn out like Vaughn Miller turned out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I remember DeSoto came over to the Viking Stadium and lost to the Vikings. And I'm watching the game going, How'd we do that? Yeah. And but it was Von Miller and Cyrus Gray and all those guys were running on, around the field for Desoto and it was they were good. From a pro perspective, for me, it's Tony Romo. Oh yeah, Tony Romo's a good one. Yeah, well, he was not appreciated. You're right. <laughs> no, we no one even heard of him. And in that first playoff game, Parcells was the only guy that appreciated him, and then they fired Parcells. Well, Jerry loved him. So, well, yeah, Jerry lo still to this day loves Romo. Hunter, tell the people what to do. Well, if you're on YouTube, click the thumbs up button. I like that. And then you can subscribe and comment and tell Nuno how great the show is. Yeah, I, I like when they do that. And one last comment. McGee and Swope are great together except in a scramble. Oh, you've been there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look at the smile. Make sure you compliment uh, Nuno's shirt and uh, Hunter's new haircut. When you're looking at it. It's a great shirt. You see the, the bruising on my biceps? You see that? Look at that. A little, little bruising everywhere. Psst. A little jujitsu. <laughs> Got my butt kicked yesterday. <laughs> That's what I did. We'll see you guys next time.